Coming up next on King 5 News, our top story. Guardian Angels in cyberspace. The crime-fighting group says it's now patrolling the Internet. I'm Lori Matsukawa in Sky King over downtown Seattle and the future City Hall building. It'll be one of the tallest in the nation. The story coming up. Navy Firepower steams towards Puget Sound will give you an onboard tour of the USS Kitty Hawk. A new drug is giving hope to prostate cancer patients. Bill Nye, the science guy, shows kids that chemistry is cool and today's Science Fest. Good evening. I'm Gene Anderson. And I'm Bob Sellers. And for Dennis Bounds, King 5 News at 6.30 is next. Number one of the Northwest, you are watching King 5 News. Coverage you can count on. With all the news for Western Washington, today's top story. And first alert weather. And now, King 5 News at 6.30. We're looking for people who are already on the internet and just keep their eyes and ears open a little bit more while they're there. There's a new sheriff on the superhighway. The Guardian Angels say they've logged on to the internet and they're looking for criminals. Many parents are worried about who their children come in contact with on the internet. Law enforcement officers say they don't have the personnel to patrol the internet. Well, now there's a force in cyberspace called the Guardian Angels. King 5's Jim Foreman has the story. The Guardian Angels are about to start patrolling the Internet. By the end of next month, the group best known for working at preventing street crime will be sending volunteers into cyberspace. The Angels say the Internet is greatly uncharted and unpoliced, and that could lead to trouble. The anonymity that it can provide is the risk and the feeling of that nobody's watching you, that nobody cares what you do, and if you're smart enough or fast enough, nobody will catch you. The Guardian Angels say they are not looking to censor the Internet, but rather keep an eye out for people who are abusing the web by using it to commit crimes. There's a sensationalistic side of the pedophiles, but I think that those are um, more few and far between than the dissemination of hate information, uh, dissemination of how to you know, build bombs, credit card fraud. Parents groups, like Mothers Against Violence in America, say something has to be done to keep the internet a safe place for kids to explore. It can only put pressure on the criminals that are wanting to get on the internet because uh, the criminal activity is going to be everywhere, including this new cyberspace. It's too constricted. It's, it's, a, uh, it's vigilante in a way. Yeah. Terry Carroll owns the Internet Cafe in Seattle, a mixture of cyberspace and caffeine. He doesn't like the idea of the cyber angels. You know, freedom of speech is a very delicate and important thing, and uh, and uh, when you have one group is going to start policing and targeting certain people, it can be very dangerous. But Eric Hertz, a self-described internet tour guide, takes a more moderate approach. He says there has to be a mix of internet users policing themselves and parents keeping an eye on how their kids are using the internet. I think the Guardian Angels can contribute to, to the education about what's out there, and, that, and that's useful. But um, it is up to the responsibility of the parents to, to, to guard their own children, really. There seems to be one underlying theme in all this, that if there is going to be policing, it needs to come from within the internet community and not an outside source like a government. That could be tough, though, if self-policing doesn't work. I'm Jim Foreman reporting live in the newsroom. So, Jim, is anybody policing that area now other than the Guardian Angels? Good question. In some of the uh, commercial services, uh, basically all of them, CompuServe, America Online, places like that, they do have uh, electronic monitors who sit and watch computer screens in the various uh, conversation rooms, chat rooms, and if people get out of line, you can have your, uh, your membership in that particular service uh, taken away. So uh, in some of those larger, well-known services, yes, people are watching. But in terms of the general Internet, the, the global web, nobody's out there. Uh, a changing scenario. Thank you. Jim Foreman, live in the King 5 newsroom. More details now on our top story. The Guardian Angels are just starting up the program, but someday they do hope to have hundreds of their members guarding the Internet. Later this week, Congress is expected to take up legislation that could impose new rules on Internet users. The Justice Department is extending its antitrust investigation of Microsoft. The government is looking into Microsoft plans to bundle its new online service, Microsoft Network, with the release of Windows 95. That release is scheduled in less than a month, August 24th. Microsoft stock fell after the news of the continuing investigation. It closed today at 90 and a half. 
That's down two and an eighth. A skyscraper with a polished granite face and a little too fancy for City Hall? Well, the Seattle City Council doesn't think so. King 5's Lori Matsukawa is in Sky King over what will soon be Seattle's Municipal Center. Bought with your tax dollars. Lori? Gene and Bob, we are going to look outside of Sky King and take a look at the key tower, formerly called the AT&T Gateway Tower. It's a five-year-old Class A office building looking for an owner. The price tag, $125 million, which one Seattle council member called a bargain. A quick trip inside the Seattle City Light Building tells the story. The 50s era structure is too cramped and in constant need of repair. Uh, usually there's some problems with the elevators, so I think the employees that work in this building will be very happy to uh, be in a building where they can efficiently move between floors. Well, I've worked here for 16 years, and the environment's been very tight as far as working environment. I'm working in a hallway now, so that makes it difficult. The same holds for the public safety building. Seattle voters rejected a bond issue for a new home for the police and municipal courts last fall. And the municipal building is so old, any attempt to refurbish it would trigger earthquake safety standards, which cost a bundle. The city believes buying the key tower would actually save taxpayers $121 million in renovation costs. At 62 stories, this would be one of the tallest skyscraper city halls in the country. The one in Los Angeles is only 27 stories tall. The elevators here work well, and some of the views are breathtaking. While some might consider the $125 million price tag breathtaking, some council members point out it cost $200 million to build five years ago. What we have here, I think, is unequivocally a first-rate building for a bargain price. It's lowest risk because we already have a built building, so there won't be any cost overruns in construction. Three council members voted against the tower, preferring to build from scratch. First, I think it is totally unsuitable as a city hall for the city of Seattle, both in image and in function. The city won't be entirely moved into the key tower until the year 2001. That's when the leases for current tenants expire. Reporting live in Sky King, Lori Matsukawa, King 5 News. Well done deal, we assume, but how did the city and taxpayers pay for this, Lori? Gene, it'll come from the general fund. It'll cost an extra $1 million a year in the budget, but the city council expects that it'll pay a lot less in repairs, and it'll also recoup some of its expenses by selling the old city light building. Thank you, Lori Matsukawa and Sky King. Well, police in Snohomish County will resume searching for a missing toddler tomorrow morning. Divers have been searching the bed of the Skycomish River all day, looking for the body of 23-month-old Kaylee Alberts. She disappeared Saturday night while playing near the river. You know, we all believe that she was went into that river, and even though no one actually seen her go in, the evidence sure points towards that. And uh, you know, I'd like to see my sister and my brother-in-law be able to have something that's tangible in front of them and, you know, so they can say their final goodbyes. Police say they'll call off the search around 7 tonight. They'll resume the efforts tomorrow morning. The Federal Aviation Administration denies it had forced Mark Air to cancel several of its flights yesterday. The airline claims that FAA grounded two Mark Air planes in Denver yesterday because of maintenance discrepancies. The airline then canceled a dozen flights, but the FAA disputes Mark Air's account, saying the agency did not tell the airline to ground the planes or cancel flights. Mark Air says all its flights are back on schedule today. Well, Boeing has begun one of the biggest restructuring programs in its history. The restructuring involves the relocation of about 12,000 employees. The employees, mainly engineers, are being moved to different locations in an effort to consolidate jobs and eliminate the divisive mentality that has sometimes pitted one Boeing division against another. Transfers are mostly within the Puget Sound region and will occur over the next four months. The USS Kitty Hawk is steaming toward the Everett home port at this hour. The Navy aircraft carrier is going to dock there tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, it will sail into Elliott Bay to take part in Sea Fair. King 5's Glenn Farley went aboard the carrier today as it sailed north along the Pacific coast. It's a military base at sea, a projection of U.S. power once intended to do battle with the Soviet Union. This is the aircraft carrier USS Kitty Hawk in 1995. I'd like the latitude and longitude of the rendezvous point. Longitude's 126.10. This is all part of the training for a post-Cold War world, where events and circumstances can change at a moment's notice. And right here on the bridge of the Kitty Hawk, the captain and crew 
can tune right into events as broadcast by CNN over the satellite. So we generally keep the, uh, the hourly news up here on the bridge so we can find out what's going on in the world. Steady on course, 002, check course, 35. Seaman Brad Brandenburg keeps the Kitty Hawk on course. Uh, right now I'm steering the ship, making sure we stay on course so these planes can land. And out here, nearly 100 miles off Astoria, Oregon, the Kitty Hawk launches its aircraft as it steams toward Everett in Seattle for seafair. And of the thousands of crew members on board, some will find a homecoming in Seafair, including Mike Mathena. I have my grandmother in Kent. I have my mother in Puyallup. And my brother lives in on Lake Terrace. For the rest who can get some liberty time ashore, Seafair should prove to be a good time. Then it's back out here to the noise, the smell of jet fuel, and the day and night job of training. Aboard the USS Kitty Hawk, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. The Kitty Hawk's first stop is around noon tomorrow at the Everett home port. The giant ship is expected to be on tour before heading south to Seattle and to Seafair. Well, Mother Nature packs a one-two punch. One day after Tropical Storm Dean made landfall in Texas, people in Florida are bracing for another tropical storm. The details coming up. Next, meet a patient who's got a lot of faith in an experimental drug to treat prostate cancer. And later, a smoky haze hovers over Idaho as a wildfire grows to 100,000 acres. And this week is supposed to offer the most reliably good weather of the summer. Will that hold true? Our forecast just ahead. Discover your Northwest with Evening Magazine. It's a broadcast exclusive. Jay-Z Knight breaks her silence and opens up her thoughts and her home to Mimi Gann. So we're going into your underground bunker, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is a biggie. Not very many people get to see this. From underground bunkers to mind control, from lawsuits to scholarships, find out the full story behind the Northwest's most famous guru. Evening Magazine, tonight at 7 on King 5. You know what you want for lunch? I know. I want a grilled cheese, but only if it's made with Kraft Deluxe, because it's rich and stays thick when it melts. If it's not made with Kraft Deluxe, well, I'll just have the soup. Oh. Kraft makes it rich and thick. Kraft makes it deluxe. What is wireless? And what does AT&T have to do with it? For the sidekicks, it's finding alternative transportation to the big game. For Joan Pfeiffer, it's sending email from her laptop to an associate's messaging device hundreds of miles away. And to Dave Coates, it's dialing his cellular phone with just call home. His voice introducing AT&T Wireless Services, technology that sets you free. Call 1-800-IMAGINE. You're watching King 5 News at 6.30. Researchers believe Alzheimer's disease is hereditary, but now doctors in Pittsburgh say they have definitive proof Scientists have located two forms of a specific gene that affect a person's risk of Alzheimer's. Anybody with the gene called ACT-A and another well-established Alzheimer's gene has a 30 to 40 times greater risk of getting the disease if your parents have it. You will not necessarily develop the disease, but your risks are significantly higher. A defect in the male sex chromosome could be the cause of most severe forms of male infertility. That's according to scientists in Massachusetts who say the defect, which is not hereditary, may account for 13% of the men who have lost the ability to make sperm. One in six couples in this country is infertile. Prostate cancer killed 38,000 men last year. Now, the American Cancer Society estimates that 244,000 more cases will be diagnosed this year. But there is some good news on the horizon. An experimental drug is offering hope to patients with advanced prostate cancer. On today's King 5 Medical Breakthrough, meet a minister who's battling prostate cancer with prayer and the help of a new drug. Some situations, we saw no way out. But God brought us through. 78-year-old Reverend Thomas Venable and his wife Ophelia are looking forward to retiring from Jerusalem Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia after 41 years. But now the minister has a new calling, fighting advanced prostate cancer that spread to his bones. The Reverend is one of 800 men in the country in a trial testing of the effectiveness of the drug Casodex. So far, he's been in remission for four years. I think I'm living today because I just caught it at an early stage. The logic is that if one can attack the cancer, although advanced, in a less severe state, that the effect of the therapy will be greatest. 
The drug blocks the action of the male hormone testosterone on the prostate. It's generally used with an injection that also blocks the hormone's production by the testes. The combination prevents the growth of cancer cells. Well, I don't have any side effects, so it doesn't bother me. I just take them and go right on. Doctors expect the drug to be approved by the FDA by the end of the year, but it's still too early to tell how long it'll suppress the disease. You can always look up to him. God has been on my side, and I feel that my prayers have been answered. On Wednesday's medical breakthrough report, shock therapy. It was banned in most states back in the 1960s because it was thought to be dangerous. Shock therapy is making a comeback as a treatment for depression. This is a medical breakthrough report you'll want to see Wednesday only on King 5 News at 6.30. Still to come, wildfires rage out of control in Idaho, plus an explosion rips the roof off a factory in Japan. We'll have the damage report. And later on, meet Bill Nye, the science guy. He meets Seattle's young scientists. But up next, Jeff Renner with your sunny first alert forecast. King 5 News is brought to you in part by the Bon Marche. A little bored, watch Nightstand. Because if you don't, someone else will. Can't decide? Watch Nightstand with Dick Dietrich. Comedy doesn't get any more better. Now, during the home sale at the Bon Marche, save on a woven jacquard comforter set in queen or king size. And on fine and casual china. Find a great low price on a Toastmaster one and a quarter pound bread maker and this Magnavox 27 inch TV with picture in picture. Or choose an Alex Vale sofa and loves you and get a bonus chair. Find more savings like these during the home sale now at the Bon Marche. You love how you will looking. You love how hot we're cooking. Yeah. You love the stuff we're made of. How do you top the hottest pizza we've ever introduced? How about grilled chicken? Three deliciously different grilled chicken combinations on our new stuffed crust. A large is just $12.99. With all that delicious grilled chicken and all that cheese in the crust, you might not know where to start. You love the stuff we're made of pizza. This is King 5 First Alert Weather. South Florida residents are scrambling as Tropical Storm Aaron steams toward the East Coast. Residents are buying plywood so they can board up their windows. Supermarkets are packed with shoppers in search of food supplies. 650,000 people have been ordered to evacuate. The National Hurricane Center predicts the storm could reach hurricane status by early tomorrow. Well, they escaped one, and then they have this other one coming through here. Well, whatever complaints we might have about the weather being too hot or too dry, we are lucky. Right, yeah, Jeff? Right. Oh, most definitely. I'll just do a quick update, and we'll keep you up to date on that hurricane or what could be a hurricane very shortly. But it is presently about 300 miles to the southeast of Florida, so still a bit of a distance away. Certainly no clouds to cover our skies. Look at that view of Mount Rainier, 82 degrees over downtown Seattle. The pollen count low. Could we be to the end of the pollen count season? Well, let's take a look at Tacoma. We'll see blue skies there also, 83 degrees, and moving a little bit to the north into Everett, 71 degrees. Thanks to northwesterly winds off the water at about 12 miles per hour. Nothing to show you on radar, so we're not going to show it to you. No purpose in it. What we will show you are some of the school net high temperatures that range today from, well, 77 degrees in Linwood on up to 84 degrees in Issaquah. But right now, among the warmer places, well, let's go and see. Tumwater Science Center in the Tumwater School District, and where else but the town of Tumwater, 82 degrees still. Northerly winds at about 5 miles an hour. Subtle change in our weather is really the phrase. Let's take a look at our latest series of satellite pictures. See the span of clouds sweeping across the Queen Charlotte Islands, the north end of Vancouver Island into mainland British Columbia. As a weak disturbance shifts inland, we're going to see a bit of a push of some ocean air. That should hold temperatures about to where they were at today, or maybe a couple degrees cooler, but otherwise, summer remains with us. Low temperatures tonight are going to be dropping into the low to mid-50s, mostly clear skies. Tomorrow, mostly sunny highs from 
67 degrees in Oak Harbor, where they'll start to feel some of that ocean air filtering eastward on up to 82 degrees in Olympia. Now, if you're headed east to the Cascades, continued very warm over there, although not as hot as it can get this time of the year. Highs from 83 in Pullman to 94 in the Tri-Cities. Slight chance of a thunder shower late in the day in the northeastern corner of the state near Spokane. Winds tomorrow northeasterly 5 to 15 miles an hour over Puget Sound, a little bit faster north of Camano, 15 to 30 in the Strait, and expect small craft advisories there in the afternoon tomorrow and perhaps even along the coast. In the mountains, sunny skies, afternoon past temperatures 65 to 72 degrees, and the five-day outlook, oh, look at that. Look at that. Mostly sunny skies through Friday, high temperatures upper 70s to low 80s, and then Saturday, maybe some low morning clouds still partly, maybe even mostly sunny and a high of 77 degrees. History and climatology says this is one of the best weeks, and it looks That's like right. exactly that We've way. got it as good as anybody in the country right now. I think they'd love to come here yeah. this week. Don't tell them. We won't. Thanks, right, Jeff. Jeff. Thanks. Pakistan is still reeling from massive flooding. That story tops our world watch. Flood waters have destroyed more than 30,000 homes and killed at least 30 people. Almost 60,000 people have nowhere to sleep at night. At least half a million people have been affected in some way. Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto is blaming the government's irrigation department for failing to maintain levees. At least 25 people are injured by an explosion at a Japanese metal parts factory. The blast ripped the roof off the factory and left a tangled mess of mangled metal. The plant is owned by Mitsubishi Materials Corporation, which is a leading manufacturer of metals and ceramics. The cause of that blast is under investigation. Three different fires, all sparked by lightning, have combined into one huge fire in Idaho. The flames have burned more than 100,000 acres. It's located about 35 miles southwest of the town of Glens Ferry. The fire started Friday. Firefighters are hoping some rocky ground will serve as a natural barrier and help stop the advancing flames. They were abandoned at birth. But now some orphan puppies have a new mom and lots of tender, loving care. The story coming up in a few minutes. And coming up next, mascot soccer takes an ugly turn in Portland as Barney loses his head. Should battered women seek refuge in the workplace? The receptionist knew to call the police if they saw my husband come through the door. I don't feel that your place of work then should become a sanctuary from this yo-yo that you decided to marry. But some corporations make helping a company policy. Until you've done everything you can to help them, you're not doing your job. Is it your boss's job to protect your life? That's so far. Tomorrow at 4 on Jane 5. Kids need a place to call their own, a place to be with friends, a place to learn about things like teamwork and self-esteem. For more than 14,000 kids in King County, that place is the Boys and Girls Clubs. And they're supported by people like you and me. You can lend your support to the Boys and Girls Club by donating to Kids Auction. Call 461-3890. Auction items and donations will benefit more than 10 clubs throughout King County. Join King 5, the home team, in action and play a part in our future. <laughs> is this uh, is it baseball or football season? I'm really not sure. You know, our football team does seem to occupy a lot of time out of season. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with what they're doing on the field, does it? Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. Another day, another injury, though, for the Seahawks. Nate Odoms was lost, of course, for the year with the knee injury last week. This week, the team loses linebacker Bob Spitulski. Now, Spitulski missed all of 93 with a serious injury to his left knee. Over the weekend, he injured his right knee. He flew to Florida for diagnostic tests, which revealed he will need surgery for a torn patella. He could be out for nine weeks or more. Baseball travel day for the Mariners, who open a three-game set with division-leading California tomorrow night in Anaheim. The Hydros are coming to see fair this weekend. Now, no matter who wins, the best story of the week will belong to driver Ken Dryden. Last year, Dryden was severely injured in this horrifying crash on Lake Washington. He broke both legs and was in the hospital for months. Yesterday, Ken Dryden was back in the Miss Elam on the Columbia River. Doctors told Dryden that he'd be lucky to ever walk again. Dryden told his doctors he would walk again and race again. It was nice to be back in the water. Um, I've been anticipating it a long time. Worked really hard this winter at getting back into shape. And you know, first thing after the wreck last year, they told me, you know, you may walk by next year this time. And I said, no, guys, you don't know me. It's, uh, we're going to be back at it. Trust me, Ken's excited about it. Some more great racing yesterday in Pasco. Mark Tate and the Smoking Joes battled all day long with the Miss Bud and Chip Hanauer. The two collided in the morning heat. No one was injured. 
They were expected to meet in the final, but Hanauer's boat broke a prop after one lap. Mark Tate Cruz to the victory, setting up the continuation of his duel with Hanauer this week on Lake Washington. All right, here we go. What do you get when you cross a soccer ball with the mascot? A whole lot of fun last night in Portland. Apparently. Check it out. The Cookie Monster with a grand entrance as mascots took the field at an indoor soccer game. Things got a little ugly in this one. On the Portland pilot mascot beheaded Barney the dinosaur. He didn't stop there. He moved down the field and eluded the defense, then kicked Barney's head in the net for a goal. The official, folks, a real zebra, though, got the last word. He ejected the pilot from the game for poor sportsmanship, much to the delight, folks, of the dancing giraffes. They had it all last night. The winner of the game got an audition with the Muppets later. Back tonight, 11 o'clock, with the pennant race in baseball. Yes, we'll have real sports later, I promise. We must be between seasons. Which is what gave it away. Which is what gave it away. <laughs> Just trying to be entertaining. Oh, you know? you're so much fun. No, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Carlos. Okay. Some orphan puppies find a new mom. Three new moms. Plus, budding Seattle scientists get to test some new theories in West Seattle. Stay with us. <laughs> Over one million girls become pregnant each year in the U.S. That's one in ten. Each year, births to teens cost the public over $34 billion. We all need to be part of the solution. Teen pregnancy prevention programs in your community need your support. Find out how you can get involved. Please call 1-800-562-1240. It's a dog tag feeling when you don't get a pee. Yeah, yeah. It's a mattress I need and a good night's sleep. Now, during the Mattress Spectacular at the Bon Marche, save 20 to 50% on every premium mattress set, like Beauty Rest, Posturepedic, Perfect Sleeper, and Beauty Sleep. And Sunday through Tuesday, take an additional $25 off any premium twin and full set and $50 off any premium queen or king set. Tonight's the night I'm sleeping tight. Only at the Bon Marche. Tell me how to subject a lawyer. Never! If you need information, just look up a heading, call the Quick Tips Information Service, then dial the code. It's amazing what you can do with the everything pages from GTE. Three surrogate moms come to the rescue of some orphaned puppies in South Dakota. Two women volunteered to take care of the puppies after the owner tried to dump them. They stayed up all night feeding the little lab's baby formula through an eyedropper. Now the tough job falls to trouble. A German shepherd from the Humane Society that just had her puppies taken away from her. So far, Trouble has had no trouble adopting her new family. It is this nation's worst unsolved serial murder case. At 11 o'clock, a surprising twist to the Green River killings. Hear from a task force investigator who consulted with another notorious ser serial killer in an effort to crack that case. Also, tens of thousands of South Floridians brace for a run-in with Aaron. The latest on the hurricane watch tonight at 11. And finally tonight, can scientists make physics fun for kids? Well, that question was the focus of Seafirst's Jammin' Science Fest in Seattle today. More than 100 Seattle area students attended this pilot program aimed at increasing kids' interest in science. Bill Nye, the science guy, was the seminar's special guest, adding personality to chemical formulas and experiments. Studies show that American kids' science scores have dropped alarmingly in the last five years. Sponsors are hoping their exhibits, puzzles, and hands-on activities will lead to improved science literacy, even if it means a few man-made earthquakes. Yes, that's what we were watching right there. That was about a five on the Richter scale. Uh, maybe not quite that bad. Maybe a point five. Uh, the, thanks for joining us. That's it for us. Up next on Evening Magazine, one of the Northwest's most famous gurus, Jay-Z Knight, answers charges that she is a fraud. It's an exclusive interview next on Evening Magazine. See you back here at 11.